Hello, good evening. Welcome to Bars and Bells. My name is Lauren. And I am Ian, and this is Strength and Swing. Took the words right out of my mouth. So, with our Strengths and Swings class, we have our kettlebells off to the side that we'll get to shortly. I have a heavy and a light there just in case. But first, mm. let's get started with a nice warm up. Get us let's moving do it. before getting under our load. Standing tall, we'll start at our head and neck. We'll take our head with our hands at our side, rotating over our shoulder. As you're doing this, are your blades, shoulder blades, pulled back in that light retraction. One more time each way. Your chin is staying level and parallel with the floor the whole time. Come back to center. And now add the chicken neck. Head goes forward and then chin tucks straight back, growing out tall the crown of your head. Repeat again. Head forward or nose face forward, chin tuck grow tall. Now from that chin tuck position, a light ear to shoulder. As you do this, think about creating that stability in the neck and only moving your head, which sits on top of that atlas vertebrae. One last time. Oh yeah. Now let's repeat some of the same things in our rib cage. Stepping your feet slightly wider. I like my arms across my chest and my shoulders slightly retracted. Squeeze your cheeks. With your head coming with you, rotate your upper body one way. Your head will stay in line with your sternum here and then pull back to center. Repeat the other way. Rotation, head does come with you this time. Back to center. Now let's keep our head forward and only rotate through that upper body. And then back to center, head stays forward only through that upper body and back to center. From here, let's slide our cage, thinking about rib cage sliding forward and then gently sliding it back behind us. As we go backwards, let's do that one more time. Take the rib cage, slide it forward. As we go backwards, keep those blades retracted as to not just protract those blades. Back to stacked. Now from here, we'll add a little slide. So I like my arms out to the side because it gives a good visual as I slide side to side here. As I'm doing this, my rib cage is now going from side to side. And again, my shoulders are staying parallel with the floor. One last time, and then return back to center and just let it go. From here, we'll get into our feet. From the parallel position, feel that pull on the floor, get to the demi point or the lunge point. And we'll be for sure doing some get ups today, so put some weight into that. Then use your toes to gently point, keeping that hip up and allow the foot to roll over. Then get back to the point point, through that demi point, and then heel comes down, hip extends. One more time on the other side, feel the pull off the floor. Then use the toes to point point. Allow them to lightly flex over. Get back to the toe tips, through the points, and then heel connects, cheeks extend and squeeze. From here, we'll press our knees towards over toes. We'll also be working on those pistol squat progressions today. So get those knees towards over the toes and then extend to tall. Repeat again, knees towards over the toes. Now this time let's extend those hips forward and then pull ourselves back up to tall. And one last time, knees forward, then hips will extend, keeping the line from the knee, the hips and the shoulders, and then press through to tall. For one balance, push into the floor to grow up. Hold on that and take your time with your knees straight as you descend back down. We'll do a light hinge, a quick wrist and plank check-in, and then Ian will take us through our first get-up. Chopping those hips back, hinging, feeling the length through your hamstring, but keeping a nice neutral spine. Lift the hips just a little bit in the air, lengthening out those hammies, and then let them drop. Repeat again, lift the hips, making the shins more vertical, and then let them drop. And this time we're gonna walk ourselves out to the floor, Placing our knees down under our hips and our fingers will connect our callus line and our palms come down. Keeping those shoulders packed, rotate those elbow pits forward and let's start with some light shoulder circles or drifting around in circles. As you do this, feel the transfer of weight from the pinky, the ring, the middle, the index over to the other hand in the same pattern and then switch directions. Feeling that connection to the floor with all five fingertips and that callus line and palm of hand. 
Once you return to center, keep the elbow straight, press the floor away through the palms. Oh, and then use your fingers to flick. This time, we're gonna come down to our hands, get our core fired up in our plank. With those hands placing them back on the floor, step back into your plank position, either from the knees or the toes. Lift the hips high, then scoop them under, connecting ribs to hips. Right now, squeeze your cheeks together. Pull your shoulders down. Pull your right hand to your right hip for three, two, then do the same on the other side. Pull your left hand to your left hip, nothing's moving. Now pull both hands to the same hips for three, two, find the floor with your knees, gently tilt your tailbone to the ceiling, push the floor forward to drift your hips back into our low squat position here. We're gonna pull forward on the floor back to that plank one last time, pull. Return to your high plank, tuck, squeeze, this time, right hip pulls to left, sorry, right hand pulls to left hip. Three, two, left hand pulls to right hip. Three, two, now cross pattern through three, two, knees come down, one last tip of the hips up, pushing back, and then we'll rock forward and listen to our get up routine. The get up routine. We could use a light dumbbell, kettlebell, or even just body weight. We'll be laddering these repetitions. First move to the floor. First move to the tall sit, back to the floor. Transition, follow along, build strength and endurance with our time under tension under, with this first drill. Start in that cuddle, pack the shoulder. Take a breath and roll to the back. Two hands to that firing range position. Assemble the other arm in that get up stance and push through the bent leg and pull to the elbow. Return to the back with control. Repeat, push through the hip, pull the elbow. Next, tall sit. From here, find the elbow and return to the floor. Do it again. We hip extend, we pull to the elbow. Tall sit is next. Follow that with our bridge and sweep. Hold for a second and return to the floor to the tall sit, the elbow and our back. One more time, we'll extend the hip. Bridge next after that tall sit. Sweep the leg, push the floor away, square up the lunge, hold it here for a second, then <clears throat> tall stand all the way up. Then return the leg back in the drop lunge, open the hip to the side, rotate under the load, hand to the floor, sweep to the tall sit, elbow, and return to the back. Two hands on and cuddle it on down. I should have said, use your light kettlebell. I have a light kettlebell here, then a heavier one for a little bit later in today's practice. And I hope I wasn't too late with that advice. Light kettlebell, practice time under tension. Other side, same thing. Pack the shoulder, roll, press. Take a second. Then from here, Extend through the bent leg to the elbow, return to the floor. Push through the bent leg on the elbow, transition to the tall sit, return to the elbow and return to the floor. Again, we'll press through the bent leg, hip extension. Tall sit next, bridge and sweep and hold. Return to the tall sit, the elbow, and then our back. Last one up here, extend the hip. Tall sit, bridge, sweep, press the floor away. Square up the lunge, hold an extra second here. Then full body tension, tall stand up, drop back, pull yourself down, open to the windmill, hinge, hand on the floor. Tall sit next, elbow, to our back, two hands on, cuddle it down. Woo. Woo. There we go. Let's flip over to our front side here. Assemble yourself in a push-ups position for hands. Whether it's with the knees or full push-up like Lauren here from those toes, let's get to the high plank, tip your tailbone to the ceiling, pedal your ankles, personalize your down dog transition here, and then take your time coming up. Get to that hinge position with vertical shins, Hips back, 
hips through and shake and wiggle. Oh, feels I'll good keep to things get going looked. here with a groove press. And Lauren, what do you got going for us? She's going to say it feels good to get under some load there. Yeah. So next we're going to warm up our single arm swings. I personally, oh yes, sorry, just reviewing what I wrote there. I'm going to start this round the first time with the bell I just used to so my lighter bell, and then I'm going to switch to my heavier bell the second time through this. We're going to do our pattern, which is two hike passes from this position, hike, park, hike, park, then two single arm stop swings, full stop, followed by two single arm continuous swings, We'll place the bell down and we'll switch sides. Standing beside your bell. We are doing single arm swings. You can also do the same drill with two handed swings. Use your hinge, grip your bell, tip it on its belly, pack your shoulder. Pull to the hike position, park. Repeat, pull, park. This time a full stop swing. Pull, swing, through, stop, repeat. Pull, swing, through, stop. Now two continuous and then park place down up without shake it out same thing on the other side prepare by using your hinge packing that shoulder pull park pull park two stops pull in that topmost position we have that plank hips are through shoulders retracted now two continuous one two Park. <sighs> nice. The one arm swings. Check in with those deadlift hinges. As Lauren said, feel free to use two hands and then presses. Presses, feel free to use bare hands as well. Work on that groove. Rack's position is right here. Very low effort. Place the arm towards overhead. At the top, elevate or shrug the shoulder, then pull down those clouds then flex that elbow, returning this hand to the rack's position. Relax. Same thing other side. Low effort up. Try to keep that armpit low or the lats down. Then elevate shrug, then grab onto those clouds, and then groove, finding that groove to pull and push from. And shake. One more time. Rack's position. Now this time, pull your armpit down, and make it exceptionally hard to press towards the ceiling. This time, the shoulder blade stays low, no elevated traps or shrug. At the top, continue to pull down and pull, grooving that press, returning to the rack. And then toss that away, or just shake it out and repeat the same thing on the other side. Pull that armpit low. Don't forget the core brace like Lauren practiced in the planks and arm pit stays low as the elbow goes straight towards overhead. Keep that upper trap low and pull it again down, then groove into that rack's position or press. Shake it out. And one more time on that swing warm up, I think. One more job on the swing. We're gonna do the exact same routine. Now you know it. If this is the bell you're gonna swing with, which is not, so I'm gonna trade out for my bell I'm gonna actually swing with here for this set. Two hikes, two stops, two continuous. Here we go. Pack shoulder, go. Pull, park, pull, park. Two stops. And then two continuous. Keep that shoulder retracted. And then park. Hmm. Take a second off. Shake it out. Same thing on that second side, hinge. Grip, pack, hike, park. Oops. Hike, park, stops, pull, swing, through, stop, repeat. And now two continuous. And park. Whew. Take a second off, one more Ooh. groove press. You got it. Then it's swing time. We'll add that light kettlebell load to the groove. Let's reinforce that clean to rack full body tension to press, one repetition up, one repetition down, and then repeat on the other side. Get the bell that you're prepared to press with, or even the lighter one that's just taking your time to get there. I go two hands in that cheek clean, pull it to the rack, 
full body tension, full press overhead, pull down with control, two hands on, and then return to the floor. How'd that go? Maybe that's heavy enough for you today. Does that say let's do it again? If so, let's repeat on the other side first, then we'll come back to presses later. Two hands to the cheek clean. Hike pass, up, full body tension, full overhead press, and pull back down to the rack. Then two hands, return to the floor, and shake it out. All right. All right. The swing time here, a little heart rate interval. I time to sense swing. it coming. I swing, you swing, we all swing. I'm gonna go either join me on my swings or stick with team Ian. Go when one of us goes, break with the other person. We're gonna start with swings five. I go five right, Ian goes five right. I go five left, Ian does five left. Then eights, then tens, then tens, then eights, then five. So we're gonna hit close to that 10 number today in our single arm swings. If that's daunting or not good for you, pick a number that's less than 10. We start with five, continuous. Little upsies, downsies, very technical training terms here as you work on swings for five. Like you can do it again, hopefully. Our reps are just suggestions. Listen to you and your practice. Let's do this together for five. Five, team Ian. So if you went with me, you're resting now as Ian does five swings. In the topmost position of those planks, glutes squeezed, core brace, strong exhale as those hips snap through. Five more. <sighs> Shake it out in between, stay loose. Reset the grips here. Five repetitions total. Strong on one side, as strong on the other. And repeat for our set of five. I need a hair elastic suit. It's getting so long. Eight swings here. Five. Five swings, sorry. I was just mentally preparing for my next set of eight here. So we're adding a couple reps. If you feel like it, let's do eight on that first side. Little bits go that long way. Challenge yourself by adding a rep or two, but replicate that effort on both sides and prioritize your recovery as well. That's seven. That's probably That's eight seven. swings right there for eight. Team Lauren. You rest and we have to go. So Team Ian, eight swings. Make sure you're starting by picking the bell up properly. That pack of the shoulder. Keeping the shoulder packed at the top of the swing here. So slightly retracted. Lat engage. I like to think the bell is attached to my hips when I swing, not my arm. Nice. That shoulder blade is connecting the load out front or out back in that hike pass to the rib cage that further connects to the hips. We use Lauren's core brace. Think that X pattern and parallel train tracks to stay strong in your swing. Team in. Second side for eight. As we Take the time to recover here. I'm gonna to try to keep my mouth closed and my nostrils open, breathing in and out the nose, which is challenging when trying to talk and good practice. Force those exhales, <sighs> controlled inhales. We're up to 10. Lauren will be controlling that exhale and inhale timed with the high yell moment of the swing, like right ha, there. For us recovering, deep in, slow in, and slower out. It's tough, regulate that heart rate, promote that recovery. 10, Lauren, is that the call? 10. Let's do it. Think about that force exhale once you put the bell down. And inhale. Team Ian, you're matching that breath to that hip snap as just discussed. Making sure your feet are still rooted in the floor. You're still using your hinge on every swing and you're not saving any power for later. Ooh, that's Use right. your power. Use your power, enjoy and take that rest, and don't half swing it. If you feel like your power or efficiency is going down, just rest, enjoy the rest. There will be more swings, there will be more get-ups. Take your time. Eight, nine, 10, coming up here. Gotta shake it out, team Ian. Catch your breath, and then again. 10 on the other side. Second side, team Ian, 10 swings. We're breathing. We're staying loose in our grips, our legs, trying to let those muscles have a little time to recover. We're at the peak. We're gonna stay at the peak for one more set and try another set of 10 on each side. Please dial down according to you. You got it. 
Little upsies, downsies, Lauren called this that peak. Stay peak for performance. High plank tension, good breathing matches throughout. And recover with the wiggles and the breath. Rests do come around quick, so shake it out and get ready to go again. 10. Set number four here of two more to go. Six total. Again, we've got a nice straight elbow up front. We're still swinging so that kettlebell sitting chest height. If it's getting lower because you're getting tired, put the bell down, do less reps. Ooh. Less is sometimes more and do things that create those powerful moments just like Lauren's swing. Restore with the breath. That's what I feel I need right now. Deep in, slower and deeper out. Whew. Team in. Last Let's set of 10 it. here. Thank goodness, last set of 10. The peak of our pyramid, the peak of our triangle, the peak, whatever. Breathe. Pack shoulder. Still keep the hinge. Power from the hips. At the top, we're stopping because of our abs and our cheeks, not that spine. We're down to eight. Lauren got it right there. The brakes, the powerhouse and those brakes are the glutes and the core. The core is always high tension and then exceptionally high tension when that kettlebell is out front. Working on eight, enjoy that shorter rest and shorter work. Here we go for eight. Loose in between from the hand, letting those forearms recover that grip strength all the way up to the shoulders. Little core, little hip. Don't be distracted by me if you're swinging. Couple more. Whew. Those are some sweet moves. Those are sweet moves. Whatever your relaxation effort is, it could be just a little shakes, the breath, and again, great high tension there, Lauren, on those swings. Heavy feet, the toes are gripping. Core is bracing. Once you get your eight, shake it out and pass the torch to our team here. Let's go. That strong controlled exhale. Slow your breath down. You're cool. You're fine. Be chill. Catch your breath. One or two more for Ian. And then we have one more round here. Fives. One set. Five sounds easy. Hopefully it's not. Enjoy an up and down. Finish with integrity. Finish with five strong reps. Maybe that's only one more. Comes around quick for those on mm. uh, my team there. Team five, Ian. Or team Ian five. You got my picture. Last one or two. Last set of five for us here. Oh, tip that down. And look to park that down the incline as well. Things to be efficient, power with the chops, control the downs, and enjoy that rest. Last set. Team Ian, finishing up these strong five. When you're done these last five reps, whether you're with me or with Ian, we'll slow down the breath a little bit together. So park that bell, close the mouth, open the noses, and for about 10 more seconds, free time on breathing. Try to be big on your inhale, force your exhale, big on your inhale, force your exhale. And now we join together. Inhale for four, three, two, one. Exhale for four, three, two, one. Repeat, in for four, out for four. In for four. Hold for four, out for four. One more round, in for four, hold for four, out for four, hold empty for four, three, two, one. Couldn't do it longer. Mm. Couldn't do that one today. That's the trickiest try. one. We try. So see how you can calm your recovery just by focusing on your breath. Whatever it is, if you're running, if you're climbing stairs quickly, if you're kettlebelling, whatever your activity is, when you're done, try to slow your breath down with your own power versus letting your body take over. <laughs> yeah. 
sometimes that's a little necessary and that's okay. Slow it down. We're pressing. It's press time. Get out the kettlebell, working on that press. We'll be doing more overhead presses. This is a brand new need for you where you didn't enjoy that prep work or you worked with a groove. Perhaps just lay in that firing range, spend time under load, or in that max position. That was me modeling the firing range. I like it. It'd be very hard to move these. Wasn't support with the ground. Presses, up C's, down C's again. Last week, three, four, five. This week, we're just aiming to do the same. Three, four, five, four, three. With some single legs in between. With single leg squats. Let's go. Okay, presses first. <sighs> yep, presses first. Let's give our legs a second. All right. We're starting with three presses. Again, if that number is too big, you pick a number. We have five sets here. Use your hinge, grip your bell, pull to that rack position. Three, one, two, and one more. Remembering as we press here, that forearm remains perpendicular to the floor the whole time. We always come back to the rack position, controlled up and control it down. The other thing with presses is it's not just your shoulder doing the work, it's your cheeks and your core, so use them. Second side, here we go. Cheek clean, zip, and three. And then parking that bell down. Controlled. Hmm. Here we go. First press in the books. Working on those single leg squats here. All good for the first row, follow more for the second set. We'll start in our low flamingo pose. Hold balance. Bend on the ankle. The knee bends what? to the pink knee over toe on that ankle. Then push the hip through and hold your tall balance. Repeat two more, slow and steady, knee over toe. Then lead the knee there, push the hip through, holy calves and holy glutes. One last time, knee over toe. Push the hip through, fully extend, return to two feet, shake it, wiggle it, repeat it on the other side. Low position first. Knee bends over that toe and push the hip through, extend it to tall. Again, slow the down. Encourage that knee over toe with the flat foot and push the hip through. Pull kneecap up, up, up at the top. And last one, knee over toe. Push the hip through, flat foot, on the balance, returning to the feet. And shake. Excellent. Pressing. Pressing comes around quick. We're aiming for the number four. Standing over top of your bell. Use your hinge. Pull it to that rack position. Inhale to pull. One. Two. Feel that off arm get some tension. Feel the glutes and the core brace to stay strong like a tree trunk underneath you. Park. When you're done, you're four. Hmm. Tree trunk analogy earlier today. Strong in the core to support that rib cage over top. <laughs> Anytime. Ready for you. Ready? Same thing, other side. Hinge grip. Four. Last one or so. Sorry if you're pressing a little bit quick there. My lighter bell a bit today. Nice. All right, so we're working on our single leg nice. squat, slowly pressing towards our pistol squat. The biggest and the hardest part of the pistol squat is the lowest portion. So we're gonna practice that with our feet in parallel. I'm gonna do two drills, this one and the next time, just to tidy it up. So knees go over toes. Now, you're gonna have to sit back a little bit. I want you to tilt your tailbone to the back wall and sit as low as you can with that position in your hips. You're gonna reach a point where you can no longer do that and your tailbone is gonna slightly tuck under. Allow that to happen, but at the deepest part. Can you hang out here? Try to keep that spine extended, push into the floor, press through to tall. When we're in that low position, our heels are on the floor. Only go as low as you can with your heels down. Do it again, knees towards over toes. 
light tip of the tailbone, reaching your femurs towards the back wall. Keep reaching them, keep reaching them, keep reaching them. When you reach the point, you can no longer keep that position. You'll round a little bit through that lumbar, hang out, and then press through to tall. <sighs> Where do you feel that the most? One more. Mm. Mine's tib anterior. The front of my shins, interestingly enough. Here we go, one last time. Knee towards over toes. Femurs reach back. Long, 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 long. Once you have to, allow that slight tip of the hips. We're sinking low, hanging out, and then we'll press it all. We'll add on to that next time. Stay tuned. Wait. Stay tuned. Until then, it's our set of presses. And I'm enjoying this rest. Lauren's looking at me as if it's my turn to go. I personally want the rest. Take your rest as you need. Lauren's itching to go. It's five. Literally. Of our press. This represents the most we'll do today. Then we'll go back down, fours and threes after. All right. I'll talk. You have a heavy bell. Five presses. Stepping over top. Use your hinge. Pull it to that rack position. And five. Glutes and abs on the up. When you're pressing that higher volume, you're not gonna go so slow on the down, right? You're not doing your negative on the down, but you're still controlling that bell to the rack position. So make sure it's not just flopping back in, but a controlled down. I like to think of a reverse chin up. Ready? Second side. Hinge grip, hop up, five. Now you says you're pressing, you have that firm grip on the bell, sending that energy from the pinky down into the tricep. It's up, it's up, it's up. Sorry, that was probably a little loud. It's up, it's up, it's up. It's like a soundtrack in its own. All right, we're going to cruise around a little bit in that low duck position. Again, stay in the stationary position if that's for you, or clear your area. Feel you don't need too much, trust me. We'll go knees towards over toes. We'll tilt the femurs, reaching them back, and then sinking low. Once you get to your safe low, could you walk through this like a duck? So heel, you're gonna roll over that back foot, whoops, and come underneath. You can add the arms in, but that's optional. Right, nobody wants that. Now, can we go back to where you came from? Do ducks walk backwards? I don't know, they do now. Toe, ball, heel, end with two feet in parallel underneath you, and then press through to tall. That one I felt. The old VMs there. I've never done the duck walk backwards. It was the first time for everything, I guess. I like those. Yeah, me too. Mallards, they're so cute. All right, we're down to fours. Any ducks, actually. I don't discriminate. Four. Four presses. Here we go. Back over top of that bell. Prepare for lift off. Now, my eyes don't look at the bell when I'm doing this sort of press, but what they do look at is something higher than my eyesight. So I look up a little bit. Don't look down when you're trying to press something overhead. It's not gonna work. Look up. But don't also crane your neck. It's a happy medium. Here we go, second side. Hinge, rack it. Check out where that gaze is. And then park with control. Hmm. Little things like the eye gaze, like saying in your head, it's up, it's up, it's up, it's up. Those things all help. Great. Uh, failed with that one. Oh, darn. It's okay. It happens. Try not to let it happen. But it happens. We'll make sure we get those three strong reps that next time. Single leg squats. Back to me. Back to you. Let's work. 
from that single leg stance. From here, we'll go that knee over toe. Now keep the knee at the same height of the elevated leg. Extend it with either ballet point or the yoga foot. Then extend to tall. Pull the leg back in underneath. Repeat for our two repetitions. Knee over toe. Knee stays same height, extend. Then the leg lift higher as you stand on the balanced leg. Return. Last one, knee over toe. Extend the leg, hips through, pull back. Stand tall on two feet, and then add that wiggle. And three repetitions on the other side. Pull. Pull the elevated leg off the floor even higher, compressing in the hip. Then point the leg out front and extend that hip through. Bend the knee. Two more. Knee over toe. Straighten the leg out front. Extend that hip. Pull back underneath. Repeat one more. Slow one, steady on the down. Controlled on that leg out. Power through. Return like it's easy. Two feet like it's easy. <laughs> and let it go. And shake. One last set of presses here. Threes. Ooh. Threes. We went up. We came back down. We're back to three. Get your bell out. Finish strong. If three is too many, do one or two. Here we go. Grip. Hup. One. Two. Three. Thinking about all those things we've talked about over the course of these presses. The feet rooted, the glutes helping you, the kneecaps pulling up to shoot the energy up, the core brace, the off arm, the eyes, oh, the thoughts, down. everything. Think about it all right now. Go. Last set. Nice. Last one. Nice. Oh, it's up, it's up, it's up. And then it's down. Just like that. Excellent. Last week, we finished with your safe full repetition of your pistol squat. We'll do that for one or two each leg here. Start by standing on a single leg. Then reach that other leg out front. And with time and control, sit towards the low and extend that hip back through. One more, only go as low as you know that you can come home from. Power, all the way up, stand on two feet, shake it out, repeat, two reps on the other side. Leg out front and lift it up off the ground to help stabilize that movement. Nice and controlled low, the body tension to the top. And one last time, nice and controlled low, Cramp on that other leg. Woo. Both of us stop that. Yeah. And shake it out. Let's just go through that little checklist there. Can you bobble your head and shake it out? Can you bobble your rib cage and shake it out? Ribs or shoulders. Uh, either. Let the arms go a little bit. Maybe let that rib cage go a little bit. Then a little hip to shake. A little knees and quads. A little ankles to finish up. There you go. Stay strong, be silly, but stay strong and loose and enjoy all that strength and ultimately the relaxation that happens after. I'm Ian. I'm Lauren. Tonight was our strength and swings class where we play with our kettlebells and our strength. On Thursday, we go to the bar and do some mobility and a little bit of grace, but don't worry if you're not graceful. I totally understand. Join us then. And then on Friday, we restore and recharge all from our activities that we did this week. Thanks for joining. Take care, stay strong. We'll do this again soon. Goodbye. Goodbye.